Hey guys, Kill Thornton here, back with another video. And here we're taking a look at a newer mouse from Razer, which is the Orochi. It's been out for a little bit now. I have been testing it for quite a while. It's gonna be Razer's take on that egg-shaped mouse, which we're so familiar with from th something like the G305 from Logitech. And then we saw Corsair do the Qatar Pro. So quite a few egg shapes coming out. This one is a bit smaller than the G305 and offers something a little bit more unique while still kind of having some of those same characteristics. So in today's review, we'll kind of compare the two as well as just focusing on the Orochi and what it brings to the table, so let's hop into it. As far as box contents go, they are very simple. Besides getting the mouse itself, you're also gonna receive some documentation and then one lithium ion battery. Inside the mouse is where you're gonna find your dongle being stored at along with your battery base and something different with your Orochi versus a lot of other razor mice. Instead of just popping off the back end of the shell, the actual whole top of the shell pops off and that has to go into some of the customization that you're allowed to do with the Orochi as well. If that's something you guys wanna look into, there's a ton of options on the website, but taking the top shell off, very simple. There's a little notch on the back end of it. Go ahead and just pop your fingernail right under that notch and then you can lift up and it does come off super easily, opening up the entire back and then you can see your battery bays as well as where your dongle can be stored if you're gonna be on the road with it or traveling. It's nice to have that option available. There is an option for either a AAA or a AA. Um, use one or the other and the advertised weight at 60 grams is pretty misleading. The only way you're gonna get close to 60 grams is if you're using a, a triple A lithium ion battery and the one they include in the box is a double A um, lithium ion battery. Lithium ion batteries are more expensive, but it is gonna drop the weight down as well as give you really good battery life. But with the double A that they do include in the box and the top shell on, it's gonna come on my scale at least up to like 74 grams. So, you know, 14 grams over the advertised weight, kind of misleading I would say. Um, but if you wanna pop a triple A lithium ion battery, that would help get that weight down even more so. But just realize, if if you're gonna pull it out of the box and use what they include, you're gonna be more at like a 74 gram weight. So quite a bit over the punching weight that they're advertising at 60 grams, but still obviously good. One nice thing about how they have the battery base laid, instead of like the G305 and stuff we see, where they're laid like at a straight angle or more towards the back, this is more towards the middle of the mouse and at the angle. So it does make it have a nicer balance because in a lot of battery loaded mice, you'll find that they're just back heavy. So that's one thing I did enjoy about how it is loaded in there, made for a nicer, more quality feel as far as the balance and goes even with a battery loaded mouse. For battery life on this, they do have some pretty insane claims all the way up to 950 hours. That's only gonna be with the AA lithium ion battery and then also in Bluetooth. But also if you're using the AA lithium ion battery, <laughs> times have I said that, um, then if you have it in their hyperspeed wireless mode or the 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection mode, you can still get all the way up to 425 hours. So really good battery life here. This thing's gonna last you a long time. And then obviously if you are wondering, you know, how long will like a AAA last, if I'm gonna be using it this much, they have a really handy calculator on their website where you can put how much you use it daily as well as with what battery you use and it'll give you an estimated time of how long it would last if that's something that interests you. Once you've either gotten your dongle out and plugged it in or got your batteries in, putting the shell back on, also very simple. All you gotta do is line up where your um, clicks go in and then it just sits right back on there, super easy, and the implementation of it also feels good. On the bottom of the mouse is where you're gonna find your switch to go between either that Bluetooth or that 2.4 gigahertz wireless and then when that switch is in the center position, that's when your mouse will be completely off. Also, you're gonna get your two um, decently big PTFE skates for the size of the mouse, at least, as along with one around the sensor. And I have to say, so far, these are the best feeling skates I've had um, or used on a Razer mouse. Um, really nice, smooth, consistent glide. No issues there. I don't like have a really big need to switch them out for some aftermarket skates, so that's nice to be able to say. Then they are using Razer's 5G optical sensor on the bottom as well. Um, so far for me, super spot on, whether I be in that Bluetooth mode or in that 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection. The Razer Orochi shape is where we see a pretty sizable difference between the G305 and Orochi. Um, at first looks, just looking at them obviously, they look extremely similar. Um, both of them having a similar appearance as far as that shape goes, but it's a, a world of difference I would say. Like when I put my hand on the G305, I feel like it fills out my hand a ton more, a lot more comfortable for me to play in the G305, just because I have a bigger hand and I prefer more of that claw to a palm style hybrid grip. Whereas with the Orochi, I can't even get into a claw in this area. This is mainly just forcing me straight into that fingertip. So if you are someone with bigger hands and you like like that more claw to have maybe a palm or some hybrid in between there, uh, I would say the Rochi's probably not gonna be for you, just is it, it's a smaller mouse. Um, as far as length goes on it, it's 108 millimeters with a width of 60 and then a height of 38 millimeters. Whereas with uh, G305, we see 116 length, so pretty big difference there, a little bit wider at 62 millimeters and then a depth of 38. So similar on the width and height, but the length is where they make up for a lot more in the G305, along with having that hump, I would say a little bit more pushed towards the back so it can meet into the back of the palm 
easier. So if you've used the G305, do realize it's not gonna be the same experience switching to the Orochi. It is definitely a smaller mouse and it's gonna be more aimed towards that fingertip to a claw grip if depending on the size of your hands. On um, the shape itself, yes, it's nice and it's gonna work for those of you. Again, just not my preference for a shape, but I've had no issues with it so far along with the coating be a nice grippy texture to hold on to for that fingertip style grip. For switches on mouse one and two, these are using Razer second gen mechanical switches. So no opticals in this and I have to say, uh, I'm a big fan of these. I don't, I've never been super attached to their optical switches. They just feel kind of dead. Um, not much tactility to them, but um, so far with these second gen mechanicals, really been enjoying them. They have a nice snappiness response to them. Um, overall, um, have been feeling good. There's definitely noticeable post travel on them, but it's nothing that affects me while I'm using it or playing games on it, as well as with a decent amount of side to side play. And I do believe that's just because the shell does come off so easily. But again, nothing that affects me in game. I just want to point out to you guys, because if you're someone that's really sensitive or hypersensitive to that kind of stuff, it might be something that you find bothers you. As far as side buttons go though, they are pretty small, but of course it is a smaller mouse, so we expect that. Positioning on them though, I think it's in a really good spot, easy for me to get to them, and I think it's gonna make a lot of you fingertip users out there happy with where they're located, as well as sticking out a decent amount, so very easy to get access to. A bit of mushiness on it, as well, along with a bit of side to side playing it, but nothing bad, um, something that you can easily get used to, and it's posed no issues to me in game. I feel like you're gonna be hard pressed to find a mouse that does not have some play in those buttons. Um, so, so far I've been happy with them. Moving on to the scroll wheel though, I would say it's leaning more towards that heavily tension side of things. Um, each step very um, dominant there. You can feel each one. I personally like that. Um, and it's also easy to depress. So a really nice feeling scroll wheel. And then finally you have your DVI button, which is gonna allow you to cycle between those predetermined stages, whatever you set up in the software. The standard Orochi itself can be picked up for $70 on Razer's website, which I already feel like is a little bit um, overpriced. Personally, for me at least, I think I would love to see them get it down to like 60, maybe even $50 like we saw the G305 sitting at. And again, they do have that modularity design with it where you can pop that top shell off and they have a ton of offerings as far as designs go. If you wanna be able to switch that top shell off, but if you wanna do that, then it's gonna bring you up to $90. So, I mean, for me personally, spending $90 on this mouse is just, I don't know. I don't think it's reasonable. I don't think it should be that much. Obviously, when you're spending $90, though, you're getting the extra shell and something to customize, which can definitely be worth it to some people. For me personally, definitely not. Um, is it worth that price point? Um, I think it's going to be to some people. For me personally, again, as far as my grip style goes, it doesn't really lean me towards liking this. I'm not a fingertip user or um, I, 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 yeah, it doesn't work for me good at the fingertip. If you have smaller hands, you could hop into a claw on this and that might open up a little bit more for you. Um, for me personally, is it going to replace the G305? Um, with it coming at a cheaper price point, obviously it's a little bit heavier, but the grip style on this just feels so much better to me. So um, if you're someone who loves a G305 and you love that claw to a palm style grip, I don't see any reason why you'd want to go to this. Although it's nice to see another egg shape on the market and having the new advancement they do on the Razor Orochi, I think it's going to appeal to a lot of people that already enjoy the G305 and you might be in that boat. Um, I will probably be having a more detailed comparison between the G305, the Orochi, Rochi and also the um, Qatar Pro wireless from Corsair, kind of comparing all the different egg shapes because I know some people will probably be interested in that. But overall, I think it's a great mouse. I think it's a little overpriced, but I do think it delivers a lot of good things in a small package. So if it's something that interests you guys, I would definitely recommend picking it up. There's no issues with the mouse itself. I just think the price point could be brought down a little, but hopefully you guys did find this helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.